This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak warns of apartheid if Israel does not achieve peace with the Palestinians. Is the two state solution dead? And would Israelis and Palestinians agree to binational coexistence? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. The dreaded A word has once again made its way into Israeli media, not by a renegade leftist, but by a prominent Israeli politician, the Minister of Defense, who is a decorated soldier and a former prime minister as well. A is for apartheid. An awful word that evokes awful memories, presumably left behind in the annals of history in places such as Soweto and Cape Town. A word that has invited rage, insults, and attacks against a former U.S. president who received a Nobel Peace Prize. This past Tuesday, however, Defense Minister Ehud Barak warned that if Israel does not achieve a peace deal with the Palestinians, it will have to become a binational state or be an undemocratic apartheid one if it remains as it is. The simple truth is, if there is one state, including Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza, it will have to be either binational or undemocratic. If this block of millions of Palestinians cannot vote, that will be an apartheid state. Barak said at the Herzliya conference north of Tel Aviv. Though rarely used by Israeli leaders in connection to the Palestinians, the term apartheid is becoming more common to describe the current reality on the land between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. More than two years ago, on the anniversary of the 1947 UN partition plan that would have divided British Mandate Palestine into a Jewish and an Arab state, then Prime Minister Ehud Olmert warned of this same scenario. In an interview with the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, Ehud Olmert said that Israel was finished if it forced the Palestinians into a struggle for equal rights. If the day comes when the two-state solution collapses, and we face a South African-style struggle for equal voting rights, then, as soon as that happens, the state of Israel is finished. But veteran Israeli journalist David Michaelis believes that a South African-style apartheid system has already emerged due to Israel's prolonged occupation of Palestinian territories. Ehud Barak wanted to scare the public and make the right-wing Zionist party think that they have to know that they are entering into a binational situation with no Jewish majority. The situation is already binational. There's an apartheid system functioning, and it is happening now, and everyone is in denial about it. Five years ago, David Michaelis and I jointly interviewed Palestinians and Israelis about the prospect of a binational state. Most Palestinians we spoke to then were thinking of independence, and most Israelis were thinking of separation. At the time, the Israeli government was frantically building the separation wall, and only a handful of Israelis entertained the idea of binational coexistence. We are in a binational condition. It is not that one day we proclaimed a binational condition. Mm -hmm. but, uh, One such person we interviewed who predicted what Ehud Barak is currently cautioning off was Miron Benvenisti, a former deputy mayor of Jerusalem. Benvenisti has recently published an elaborate article in Haaretz chronicling how Israel became a de facto binational regime. The attempt to mark the settlements and the settlers as the major impediment to peace is a convenient alibi obfuscating the involvement of the entire Israeli body politic in maintaining and expanding the regime of coercion and discrimination in the occupied territories and benefiting from it. According to him, the violent events of the Second Intifada brought the Jewish-Israeli public to a crossroads in relations to their neighbors' enemies. Benvenisti argues that Israeli Jews turned their backs on the Palestinians, erasing them from their consciousness and imprisoning them behind impenetrable walls, and became willing to congregate in a ghetto and pray that the Mediterranean might dry up or a bridge be built to connect them with Europe. David Michaelis concurs and believes that most Israelis prefer to live in denial and avoid the subject of apartheid. 
as a peace process is just a misnomer and the word occupation is also misleading because it's a systematic control system. How long can Israelis live in this denial and pretend that apartheid-like conditions do not exist? Well, you've heard of the expression, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, well, you know the rest. I'm Jamal Dajani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mir. You can also follow my updates on Twitter. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.